a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Catherine Hepburn Catherine Houghton Hepburn was an American actress known for her fierce independence and spirited personality. Hepburn was a leading lady in Hollywood for more than 60 years. She appeared in a range of genres, from screwball comedy to literary drama, and she received four Academy Awards, a record for any performer, for Best Actress. In 1999, Hepburn was named by the American Film Institute as the greatest female star of classic Hollywood cinema. Raised in Connecticut by wealthy, progressive parents, Hepburn began to act while studying at Bryn Mawr College. After four years in the theater, favorable reviews of her work on Broadway brought her to the attention of Hollywood. Her early years in the film industry were marked with success, including an Academy Award for her third picture, Morning Glory, but this was followed by a series of commercial failures that led her to be labeled box office poison. In 1938, Hepburn masterminded her own comeback, buying out her contract with RKO Radio Pictures and acquiring the film rights to the Philadelphia story, which she sold on the condition that she be the star. In the 1940s, she was contracted to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, where her career focused on an alliance with Spencer Tracy. The screen partnership spanned 25 years and produced nine movies. Hepburn challenged herself in the latter half of her life, as she regularly appeared in Shakespearean stage productions and tackled a range of literary roles. She found a niche playing middle-aged spinsters, such as in The African Queen, a persona the public embraced. Three more Oscars came for her work in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, The Lion in Winter, and on Golden Bond. In the 1970s, she began appearing in television films, which became the focus of her career in later life. She remained active into old age, making her final screen appearance in 1994 at the age of 87. After a period of inactivity and ill health, Hepburn died in 2003 at the age of 96. Hepburn famously shunned the Hollywood publicity machine and refused to conform to society's expectations of women. She was outspoken, assertive, athletic, and wore trousers before it was fashionable for women to do so. She was briefly married as a young woman, but thereafter lived independently. A 26-year affair with her co-star Spencer Tracy was hidden from the public. With her unconventional lifestyle, and the independent characters she brought to the screen, Hepburn epitomized the modern woman in the 20th century United States and is remembered as an important cultural figure. Early life and education Hepburn was born on May 12, 1907, in Hartford, Connecticut, the second of six children. Her parents were Thomas Norville Hepburn, a urologist at Hartford Hospital, and Catherine Martha Houghton, a feminist campaigner. Both parents fought for social change in the U.S., Thomas Hepburn helped establish the New England Social Hygiene Association, which educated the public about venereal disease, while the elder Catherine headed the Connecticut Woman Suffrage Association and later campaigned for birth control with Margaret Sanger. As a child, Hepburn joined her mother on several votes for women demonstrations. The Hepburn children were raised to exercise freedom of speech and encouraged to think and debate on any topic they wished. Her parents were criticized by the community for their progressive views, which stimulated Hepburn to fight against barriers she encountered. Hepburn said she realized from a young age that she was the product of two very remarkable parents, and credited her enormously lucky upbringing with providing the foundation for her success. She remained close to her family throughout her life. The young Hepburn was a tomboy who liked to call herself Jimmy, and cut her hair short. Thomas Hepburn was eager for his children to use their minds and bodies to the limit, and taught them to swim, run, dive, ride, wrestle, and play golf and tennis. Golf became a passion of Hepburn's. She took daily lessons and became very adept, reaching the semi-final of the Connecticut Young Women's Golf Championship. She loved swimming in Long Island Sound, and took ice-cold baths every morning in the belief that, the bitterer the medicine, the better it was for you. Hepburn was a fan of movies, from a young age, and went to see one every Saturday night. She would put on plays and perform for her neighbors with friends and siblings, for 50 cents a ticket to raise money for the Navajo people. On April 3, 1921, while visiting friends in Greenwich Village, Hepburn discovered the body of her adored older brother, 
Tom, dead from an apparent suicide. He had tied a sheet around a beam and hanged himself. The Hepburn family denied it was suicide and maintained that Tom's death must have been an experiment that had gone wrong. The incident made the teenage Hepburn nervous, moody, and suspicious of people. She shied away from other children, dropped out of Oxford school, and began receiving private tutoring. For many years she used Tom's birthday as her own. It was not until her 1991 autobiography, Me, Stories of My Life, that Hepburn revealed her true birth date. In 1924 Hepburn gained a place at Bryn Mawr College. She attended the institution primarily to satisfy her mother, who had studied there, and recalled disliking the experience. It was the first time she had been in school for several years, and she was self-conscious and uncomfortable with her classmates. She struggled with the scholastic demands of university, and once was suspended for smoking in her room. Hepburn was drawn to acting, but roles in college plays were conditional on good grades. Once her marks had improved, she began performing regularly. She performed the lead role in a production of The Woman in the Moon in her senior year, and the positive response it received cemented Hepburn's plans to pursue a theatrical career. She graduated with a degree in history and philosophy in June 1928. Breaking into theatre, 1928-32 Hepburn left university determined to become an actress. The day after graduating, she travelled to Baltimore to meet Edwin H. Knopf, who ran a successful stock theatre company. Impressed by her eagerness, Knopf cast Hepburn in his current production, The Tsarina. She received good reviews for her small role and the printed word described her performance as arresting. She was given a part in the following week's show, but her second performance was less well received. She was criticized for her shrill voice, and so left Baltimore to study with a voice tutor in New York City. Knopf decided to produce The Big Pond in New York, and appointed Hepburn the understudy to the leading lady. A week before opening, the lead was fired and replaced with Hepburn which gave her a starring role only four weeks into her theatre career. On opening night, she turned up late, mixed her lines, tripped over her feet, and spoke too quickly to be comprehensible. She was immediately fired, and the original leading lady rehired. Underdurred, Hepburn joined forces with the producer Arthur Hopkins and accepted the role of a schoolgirl in these days. Her Broadway debut came on November 12, 1928, at the Court Theatre, but reviews for the show were poor and it closed after eight nights. Hopkins promptly hired Hepburn as the lead understudy in Philip Barry's play Holiday. In early December, after only two weeks, she quit to marry Ludlow Ogden Smith, a college acquaintance. She planned to leave the theatre behind, but began to miss the work, and quickly resumed the understudy role in Holiday, which she held for six months. In 1929, Hepburn turned down a role with the Theatre Guild, to play the lead in Death Takes a Holiday. She felt the role was perfect, but again she was fired. She went back to the Guild, and took an understudy role for minimum pay in a month in the country. In the spring of 1930, Hepburn joined a theatre company in Startbridge, Massachusetts. She left halfway through the summer season, and continued studying with a drama tutor. In early 1931, she was cast in the Broadway production of Art and Mrs. Bottle. She was released from the role after the playwright took a dislike to her, saying, She looks a fright, her manner is objectionable, and she was no talent, but Hepburn was rehired when no other actress could be found. It went on to be a small success. Hepburn appeared in a number of plays with the summer stock company in Ivoryton, Connecticut, and she proved to be a hit. During the summer of 1931, Philip Barry asked her to appear in his new play, the Animal Kingdom, alongside Leslie Howard. They began rehearsals in November, Hepburn feeling sure the role would make her a star, but Howard disliked the actress and again she was fired. When she asked Barry why she had been let go, he responded, Well, to be brutally frank, you weren't very good. This unsettled the self-assured Hepburn, but she continued to look for work. She took a small role in an upcoming play, but as rehearsals began she was asked to read for the lead in the Greek fable The Warrior's Husband. The Warrior's Husband proved to be Hepburn's breakout performance. Biographer Charles Hyam states that the role was ideal for the actress, requiring an aggressive energy and athleticism, and she enthusiastically involved herself with its production. The play opened March 11, 1932, 
at the Morosco Theatre on Broadway. Hepburn's first entrance called for her to leap down a narrow stairway with a stag over her shoulder, wearing a short silver tunic. The show ran for three months, and Hepburn received positive reviews. Richard Garland of the New York World Telegram wrote, It's been many a night since so glowing a performance has brightened the Broadway scene. Hollywood Success, 1932-34 A scout for the Hollywood agent Leland Hayward spotted Hepburn's appearance in The Warrior's Husband, and asked her to test for the part of Sidney Fairfield in the upcoming RKO film Mabel of Divorcement. Director George Cukor was impressed by what he saw. There was this odd creature, he recalled. She was unlike anybody I'd ever heard. He particularly liked the manner in which she picked up a glass. I thought she was very talented in that action. Offered the role, Hepburn demanded $1,500 a week, a large amount for an unknown actress. Cuca encouraged the studio to accept her demands and they signed Hepburn to a temporary contract with a three-week guarantee. RKO head David O. Selznick recounted that he took a tremendous chance in casting the unusual actress. Hepburn arrived in California in July 1932. At 25 years old, she starred in Abel of Divorcement opposite John Barrymore, but showed no sign of intimidation. Although she struggled to adapt to the nature of film acting, Hepburn was fascinated by the industry from the start. The picture was a success, and Hepburn received positive reviews. Mordant Hall of the New York Times called her performance exceptionally fine. Miss Hepburn's characterization is one of the finest seen on the screen. The Variety Review declared, Stand out here is the smash impression made by Katherine Hepburn in her first picture assignment. She has a vital something that sets her apart from the picture galaxy. On the strength of a bill of divorcement, RKO signed her to a long-term contract. George Cuca became a lifetime friend and colleague. He and Hepburn made ten films together. Hepburn's second film was Christopher Strong, the story of an aviator and her affair with a married man. The picture was not commercially successful, but Hepburn's reviews were good. Regina Crew wrote in the journal American that although her mannerisms were grating, they compel attention, and they fascinate an audience. She is a distinct, definite, positive personality. Hepburn's third picture confirmed her as a major actress in Hollywood, for playing aspiring actress Eva Lovelace, a role intended for Constance Bennett. In Morning Glory, she won an Academy Award for Best Actress. She had seen the script on the desk of producer Pandro S. Berman and, convinced that she was born to play the part, insisted that the role be hers. Hepburn chose not to attend the award ceremony, as she would not for the duration of her career, but was thrilled with the win. Her success continued with the role of Joe in the film Little Women. The picture was a hit, one of the film industry's biggest successes to date, and Hepburn won the Best Actress Prize at the Venice Film Festival. Little Women was one of Hepburn's personal favorites, and she was proud of her performance, later saying, I defy anyone to be as good as Joe as I was. By the end of 1933 Hepburn was a respected film actress, but she yearned to prove herself on Broadway. Jed Harris one of the most successful theater producers of the 1920s, was going through a career slump. He asked Hepburn to appear in the play The Lake, which she agreed to do for a low salary. Before she was given leave, RKO asked that she film Spitfire. Hepburn's role in the movie was Trigger Hicks, an uneducated mountain girl. It is widely considered one of her worst films, and Hepburn received poor reviews for the effort. She kept a picture of Hicks in her bedroom throughout her life to keep me humble. The lake previewed in Washington, D.C., where there was a large advance sale. Harris' poor direction had eroded Hepburn's confidence, and she struggled with the performance. Despite this, Harris moved the play to New York without further rehearsal. It opened at the Martin Beck Theatre on December 26, 1933, and Hepburn was roundly panned by the critics. Dorothy Park equipped. She runs the gamut of emotions all the way from May to be already tied to a 10-week contract, she had to endure the embarrassment of rapidly declining box office sales. Harris decided to take the show to Chicago, saying to Hepburn, My dear, the only interest I have in you is the money I can make out of you. Hepburn refused, and paid Harris $14,000 to close the production instead. She later referred to Harris as hands down the most diabolical person I have ever met.
and claimed this experience was important in teaching her to take responsibility for her career. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?